Let's do the opening meditation. Find a comfy posture. You can close your eyes for this one. We can feel that there is a potential within us, and we can also feel that this potential wants to be expressed. We can see that everyone is hurting in some way, even ourselves, and that pain is making us all do crazy things, and that pain arises because of causes and conditions, and those causes and conditions can be changed. New thoughts, words, and actions can be initiated or taken up that are wise, skillful, and nobly worthy of an awakened being. This will then lead to a life of freedom and true authentic happiness, an awakened life, a life that expresses that potential that we all can feel within us. I want you to imagine, imagine that world of potential. Imagine a life of freedom. Imagine a world where everyone is free and truly happy. What does that world look like? What does that world feel like? And how would you think, speak, and act in that world? To help us actualize that potential, we call out now to the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, Masters and Teachers of the Dharma, the three times and the ten directions. Please consider us with kindness and understanding and grant us your blessings that these aspirations may be accomplished quickly. May it be that we all swiftly achieve enlightenment for the sake of all beings. Take a deep breath in through the nose. And come back to us here. So at long last, we come to the first of the immeasurables. Um, we've been journeying, softening, opening up, calming, coming to ease, building stability, so that these qualities, these, this energy, may have a good uh, environment, a good base to take root and to bloom, right? to bloom. As a reminder, the four divine abodes, the four elements of true love, loving kindness, compassion, sympathetic joy, and equanimity. So there, we're going to be, today's, we're going to be uh, going through a teaching of a Theravadan uh, monk. Um, his name, Nayana Ponika Thera. And I don't, I'm not sure why more teachers haven't taught from him that I totally, totally ruined that name, right? <laughs> My apologies, forgive me. So here's what uh, he has to say about the abodes. They are called abodes Vihara, Brahma Viharas is what it's usually called. They're called abodes because they should become the mind's constant dwelling place where we feel at home. They should not remain merely places of rare and short visits, soon forgotten. In other words, our mind should become one thoroughly saturated by these four. They should become our inseparable companions and we should be mindful of them in all of our common activities. These four, love, compassion, sympathetic joy, and equanimity, are also known as the boundless states, because in their perfection and their true nature, they should not be narrowed by any limitation as to the range of beings towards whom they are extended. You know how, like, since the beginning, um, we've been working with those four phrases, and we, we first worked with ourselves and then worked with somebody that you know we like and then we sort of started to work with somebody we got a little beef with right a little frustration right huh. such that the Brahma Baharas and the four immeasurables um, help to break down the barriers that we have set up within our minds 
and loving kindness, right? Sometimes um, metri metta is translated as friendliness. And that's a good way to sort of think about it, right? Imagine the world was just friendly with each other, let alone trying to not like hitting enlightenment, just friendly. <coughs> that would be pretty amazing. I know how my life, my life is amazing, and I'm like super friendly. You know, like, you know, like, yeah. So they should not be uh, exclusive, they should be non exclusive and impartial not bound by selective preferences or prejudices like oh just my people or you know like people in Bonn they're good enough you know or like the Toronto people or the Italians <laughs> right yeah I could share my love and kindness with the Italians but not the Polish <laughs> right so the practice starts to break down those barriers. We start to see that we're all in it together. That we all want to be happy. We might be doing silly things to get that happiness. Right? But we all want to be happy. And that we're all hurting in some way. And the Brahma Viharas, they start to see that. They start to soften you. Right? They start to break down those barriers. A mind that has attained to that boundlessness of the Brahma Viharas will not harbor any national, racial, religious, or class hatred. Yeah. So the first element of true love. The first element of true love is Maitra, Maitri or Metta, which can be translated as loving kindness or friendliness, and has the wish that all beings are happy. Usually most teachings stop there, right? May all beings be happy, right? For us, that's not good enough. We're bodhisattvas, we're enmeshed in the world. So we have this extra part. And the action of small kindnesses and moments of connection to help bring happiness and ease to others. Because it's one thing, right, that we can be like on our, <laughs> on our meditation cushion, may all beings be happy, and then we're flipping the bird at everybody down the street, <laughs> right? That we don't hold the door for the, you know, you know it when you're like, okay, this is going to inconvenience me for a second, and no, like, I'm too busy to hold the door open, right? Like, small kindnesses all throughout your day. It doesn't say to do big, giant, monumental things, right? What are the small kindnesses? And the thing about metta, it starts to take you out of yourself and that me, me, me way of thinking, right? That me, me, me. Uh, here's a quote. Anybody seen the movie Dan in real life? I haven't, but I heard this quote from, uh, anybody heard of Sharon Salzberg? No? She's a great teacher. Uh, so she had come across this quote, love is in Dan in real life. Love is not a feeling, it's an ability. Right? It's an ability. And then she added to it, then if, if love is an ability, right, something that we can nourish, and grow, and learn, and share, and give, right? If it's an ability, then it's our responsibility, especially on the Bodhisattva path, right? Is that it's essential. If you want the world to be a better place, then it's, it's your responsibility, right? To cultivate, to nurture, to grow, to work with, to stumble through, to bumble through your day. You know, suck today, but tomorrow you try a little bit better to be a little bit more kind, to see when you're compromised, see when you're getting hooked, right? To understand, to breathe through it, to have a moment, to make the practice a priority, right? To send that mental blessings while you're sitting there with your shopping cart at the grocery store. May you be happy, may you be happy, may you be happy, right? Covert ninja. <laughs>
stuff, right? But it's our responsibility, right? Because the deeper and deeper and deeper you go into the practice, the more that you see, and I've said it lots of times, the only game in town is the Bonisattva path, is to free us all. Because that's the only way it's going to work. Only way, right? And dipping our toes into that is metta, is the loving kindness practice, is being kind to other people. Small kindnesses, right? Now, metta is about kindness, caring, openness, connection. And this is the other thing, too, right? Like, yeah, we talked about it. Like, most people in your life are just plants, just background lamps, right? Just the people, right, in the background scenes, right? Metta slows you, the practice slows you down, like you experienced, right, in Vancouver. Slowing down, then all of a sudden, the world is seen. Not seen for how we want it to be, how we think it should be. It's just seen for what it is. A beautiful catastrophe, right? Beautiful catastrophe. Right? We have an openness, right? And because of that, then we can connect. Right? So meta is about connection, right? Such that when you're out within the world, are you connecting with the people that you're with? Or are they just trees in the background, right? Just passing by. And that, it's a, it's a tremendous blessing to give somebody your presence. People get weirded out by it. What do you do? What do you do? Listening to you fully, completely, intently, without a need to answer, to fix. Giving you the space. Right? It's about connections. Meta is about relationships, and that you'll start to see that we're always in relationship to everything to people, places, things, the environment. Meta's, meta is about possibility, too. You start to see a possibility. You see that. There's a possibility that we all can be happy. There is that possibility. Why? Why can't we all be happy? Right? That was the question that broke me open. You guys, some of you guys know about that story, right? In the middle of aisle six or whatever it was. I was working nights. Terrible to work nights. Ugh. Terrible. But in the middle, like I heard that, like, that question. Like, what? Yeah. Why can't we all be happy? And that was it. Like I just started to cry right in front of the beans. <laughs> just right there. Why? Yeah. And then the next, yeah, I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to help. I'm going to free us all. And that was it. Courage. It takes courage to be kind, right? It's a lot safer to just put on our blinders and just to go through, right? Life is messy, and we, we don't want it to be messy, right? Everything needs to be in its place. Meta, the practice, no. Life is a mess. It's a hot mess. It's awesome. <laughs> gives you the ability to see others, and it gives you the courage to be seen. Meta as well. Uh -uh. Right? If you're having trouble with stability in your practice, work with metta. Work with metta. Because you've seen it, you've felt it. Doing the metta practice, this ease starts to radiate through the body. Right? A love, a joy, a contentment. Maybe just for me, I don't know. But I think for you guys, right? Yeah. So, this love, I like how Fitch talks about it. He doesn't call it uh, loving kindness. He calls it love. Because uh, he says, words get sick. And one of the words that got sick in our society is love. And we need to, we need to heal that word. 
we need to use it, use it wisely, and use it well. All right? So in this teaching from Nayanana Bonika Thera, <laughs> love. Love without desire to possess, knowing well that in the ultimate sense there is no possession and no possessor. This is the highest love. Love without speaking and thinking of I, knowing well that this so-called I is a mere illusion. Love without selecting and excluding, knowing well that to do so means to create love's own contrasts, dislike, aversion, and hatred. Love embracing all beings, small and great, far and near, be it on earth, in the water, or in the air. Love embracing impartially all sentient beings, and not only those who are useful, or pleasing, or amusing to us. Love embracing all beings, be they noble-minded or low-minded, good or evil. The noble and the good are embraced because love is flowing to them spontaneously. The low-minded and evil-minded are included because they are those who are most in need of love. In many of them, the seed of goodness may have died merely because warmth was lacking for its growth, because it perished from cold in a loveless world. Love embracing all beings, knowing well that we are all fellow wayfarers through this round of existence, that we all are overcome by the same law of suffering. Love, but not the sensuous fire that burns, scorches, and tortures, that inflicts more wounds than it cures, flaring up now at the next moment being extinguished, leaving behind more coldness and loneliness that was felt before. Rather, love that lies like a soft but firm hand on the ailing beings, ever unchanged in its sympathy, without wavering, unconcerned, with any response it meets. Love that is comforting coolness to those who burn with the fire of suffering and passion, that is life-giving warmth to those abandoned in the cold desert of loneliness, to those who are shivering in the frost of, love, of a loveless world, to those whose hearts have become as if empty and dry by the repeated calls for help, by deepest despair. Love that is sublime nobility of heart and intellect which knows, understands, and is ready to help. Love that is strength and gives strength. This is the highest love. Love which, by the enlightened one, was named the liberation of the heart, the most sublime beauty. This is the highest love. And what is the highest manifestation of love? To show to the world the path leading to the end of suffering, the path pointed out, trodden, and realized to perfection by him, the exalted one, the Buddha. See, I love you guys. <laughs> right? Beautiful. So this, that love, that's like bodhisattva love. That's like a big love, right? That big energy that's out there, right? Soft heart, reaching out, impartial, right? To both good and bad, right? That's like the ideal that we're shooting for, right? And it takes takes time, it takes practice, it takes showing up, and it takes those moments when you don't beat yourself up, but you see that, oh, maybe I could have said that differently. Maybe I could have responded differently. Maybe I could have showed up differently. Maybe I could have put my concerns to the side for a moment. Maybe I could have listened a little bit more. Maybe I could have just not talked and just smiled and been there, a shoulder, right? Meta is all of those things, right? All of those things. And it starts from that wish that may we all be happy. May we all be happy. Okay. You guys want to meditate? Okay. Bye.